I like to call the Mar Monday, March 16th, uh, Barone Select Board meeting to order. To my far left is Justin Lawrence, John Quinn. To my right is Chloe Smith. Um, let's see here. Also with us is Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Excuse me one second, Brad. Angelina, are you on? Angelina? Okay, thank you. Just checking. Yeah. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? Yes, I'd like to add um, uh, a meeting for the liquor board. I'd like to add a discussion on contingency of operations. I'd like to add approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. I'd like to add working in the right-of-way. And I'd like to add a letter received from a resident. And I also would like to have a placeholder in the event you appoint a police officer this evening. Okay. Are you there? Okay. Look, um, public comment? Yes, so we're here for um, uh, the vice chair of the Washington Central Unified Union School District. And John. I'm, I'm Jonathan Goddard, uh, and I uh, was on the ballot as a write in candidate for the two year seat. Uh, we had two vacancies, but because of Various people voting both for the two-year seat and the three-year seat. Things got a little bit jumbled, so I'm just here to uh, express my interest in being appointed to the two-year seat for the uh, for the Washington Central Unified Union School District. I was on the U32 school board for I don't know close to ten years. I was on the Berlin Elementary board. I've been on this board for a few years, some years back. Um, so I would like to seek that appointment um, and as the statute reads there needs to be some uh, we actual, have to consult with you. right there needs to be some discussion with the select board from the town so I did submit a letter to the uh, to the superintendent uh, expressing my interest in the seat so could you send us one as well John sure yes Please. yeah that would help the okay. Other thing, uh, Jonathan um, or Dana, actually, I'm not sure of the protocol. Do we have to uh, post this? See if there's other people interested, or well, our our policy um, is to post um, openings for committees so that people have a chance to express interest, um, and I can do that, and maybe you can appoint at the next meeting. Okay. So, um, can I just do a clarification? So the, the superintendent did a post and coordinated, I, I thought, with the town clerks if for both, because we're doing the same thing in Worcester and in, uh, in Berlin. And we, it's a consultate. The statute requires us to consult the board, appoint, if the board is the one that appoints it. We just want to make sure that there's no conflict. So it actually was posted in front of Orch Forum. And we've been... Like while going around trying to actually recruit uh, people to do it. So what you're so, saying is that it's not this board that appoints; it's the board of the school district. Oh, yes. All we that, do is that, okay the the. Uh, yeah. Okay. All, all we do is consult with you and make sure that you do not have any because it's your town that you know that you're okay with <laughs> with Jonathan mm -hmm. being the appointee, but you're not required to be the one that appoints. We, well, that makes we a do difference the appointment. Then. Definitely. So you're just saying that um, you have no objection to Jonathan being appointed. Exactly. Have a motion to that? I make a motion. Actually, we can't, can we? This is just. Uh, this, if it's this just, is just a knowledge, we wouldn't just need a motion. Kind of consensus, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, oh, I well. asked, I asked the lawyers, I asked the superintendent, is that I didn't need anything formal from you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's mostly we want to consult with you mm -hmm. and make sure that you're okay. 
I Good certainly luck, don't have any objections. <laughs> Thank you for serving. Thank you. Definitely. Sure. Most definitely. Thanks a lot. Yeah, not a problem, John. Thank you. Have a good meeting. Thank Thanks. For Thanks for, for teaching us something. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Have a good evening. You too. Well, that was simple enough. Uh, anything else on public comment? Hearing none. Uh, Treasury report, Diane. Okay. As you notice in the paperwork, uh, we've made the last payment to Northville Savings Bank on the 2015 truck, so that one is paid for now. We still have three three trucks. Uh, the 2016, 17, and 19 that we still do have, um, you know, we still owe money on, but at least we're down, you know, one payment. And those three payments are still about $70,000 a year for those three, and will continue for at least the next two years before another one drops off. Okay, just to make you aware. And otherwise, than that, anything will happen. In that rotation we're doing with the trucks, how long before we pick up another payment? Um, you know, it used to be we rotate them every five years, and it seems to me like lately it's been every three, so, you know. We didn't um, have in the budget a new truck for FY21, so we have a, a year off, although, as you know, the road superintendent is talking to you about a road grader. Mm -hmm. um, we really don't have funds for that. We put $50,000 aside for future. Yeah. Um, anticipation of having to do something. So I guess the answer to how long it will be um, is a great question of which I don't know the answer to. You know, um, we have four trucks and the oldest now is a 15. So five years. So now do we have the six year warranty on those? Yeah. Or is it five? Along the warranty. I thought it was five. I think it's five. I, th I thought the original one was two and we bought an additional three or do I have it? Yeah, but the additional is just for the powertrain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all I've got. Thank you for the question. Anything else is in the yeah, budget? Oh, sure. I think Diane also gave you, in addition to the, to the oh. monthly, um, she gave you the budget, a separate one for the budget, so that you could see that she has put in the I've added, 21 budget. We want to just right, talk to just, that a I've bit. I've added yeah. the appropriations. Every appropriation was approved at town meeting. So I've added that in to your budget that's at the end. So it also added in to what we will need to collect for property taxes. Mm -hmm. So what was the actual increase after adding everything in over last year's budget percentage wise? Uh, let's see. Uh, on the operating budget? Mm -hmm. Just the operating budget? No, I'm talking about overall to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you have all the special articles that yeah, yeah, I don't have to everyone. Really. I think it's probably under about eight percent. Mm -hmm. The, the mm -hmm. operating budget was seven seven five, and then we had another ten thousand in in appropriations that we had, and I didn't count the fire department, so probably eight and a half percent. But I'll get you a better answer than that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, Diane. Also. Maybe you'd like to just say, as far as the, the list of overdue taxes, you've made notes on them? Yes, as which I continue to make notes on them uh, all the time. What, I do which? send out delinquent tax notices, tax notices every single month, regardless. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets one if they're past due. A lot of people I'm working with. So I try to get monthly payments or whatever they can do. I just We try to keep in communication with most people. A, a lot of the issues we, that I have here is the abandoned mobile homes. And these people are, are leaving them in the parks. Uh, the parks are having a very hard time trying to move them. When I bring it to tax sale, anything I bring to tax sale is going to cost about $1,000 generally to bring to tax sale. And I have yet to have a mobile home sell at tax sale. And I brought quite a few of them to tax sale. So um, in talking with, and I know I've, I've brought this up to the board before in the past, that you know the options that we have is we, if we leave it on the books to just accumulate tax, if I can't sell it, how, how are we going to you know, get the money back from it? And there's a couple different ways that we can go. One of them is we go to the Board of Abatement and say, let's bring it down to, let's say they owe $5,000, let us bring it down to 1000 and see if we can't sell that at tax sale. But the other solution is probably, and to me it's probably the better solution, is that if it does not sell, then the select board bids on it. Because they'll do just the low bid, nobody else gets it. 
and then we'll own it, and after a year's time, then we'll have to get, do something with it, to demolish it or whatever it is that we have to get rid of it. But that's probably the, the only way that we're going to be able to off the taxes for a lot of people. We're kind of in this cycle. We have a few mobile homes, I believe, that haven't paid taxes in quite some time. Correct. They keep accumulating, the interest keeps accumulating, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just on paper. I think we have one home that yes. um, we're up to like $11,000. I think it's more than that. On, yeah. And uh, so it's not an easy fix for the town mm -hmm. to have to buy it, but it just keeps escalating. Right. And to say, to have the assessors, in my opinion, drop the value to zero so that there's no further taxes really isn't the way to handle it. But we have been doing that. Well, you we have done that. Years ago, wasn't very select, wasn't mm -hmm. the select board always do that? I can't remember. Like, I don't remember. I was like at the auction. We, so we did one property on, this property I'm thinking of, we did drop the drop the assessment, but... But we can't abate the taxes on it. So right. Whatever is due is still due. And it will accumulate interest. Right. And my own opinion of that, I think I think it's a poor policy because it the only trouble I see is everyone else. I guess I mean, if we take the the trailer and it doesn't sell, then we're just going to destroy it. Mm -hmm. There's another well, at least it's the going to cost the town money. It's definitely yeah. going to cost yeah. us money. Yeah. There's now, nothing free here. Sure. None of this, none of these trailers are on in a park or anything, so the owner of the park would take in. Yes, some of them are in a park, um, and what. Henry Lepew has been doing is he has been moving them out up off the lot onto another property that he owns in Berlin, which he can do without having to pay the taxes. If he if somebody if he wanted to move it to Barrytown, for instance, he could not move it without paying the taxes first. But he has other property here, so he moves it on his other property and we do that legally. And he is after me at this point because there's a couple property there's a couple that he wants to dispose of. And the only way he can dispose of them is if I say, well, yeah, okay, then we're not going to go after the taxes. Then I can go to the Board of Abatement and, and go that route. And I have not done that. How many trailers are we talking about? Four or five, you know. And I do have them listed on here if you, if you look through my notes. And I'll make sure I really clearly list them so that you'll understand it in the future. I'm just trying to think. So these are taking up space on Henry's property. But not in the park. Yeah. But still, it's taking up space, and he wants to get rid of the trailers? Yeah. Hmm. But he cannot demolish the trailers unless he goes to court to do that. There's a process. There is a process that you can go through. He right needs now, the town to sign off on it. Yeah, and right now, he is going to say they're abandoned. And they're abandoned, and he's moving them. But he, what other park owners have done is they go to court, and then the court will come back to me and say, okay, do you want to pursue this? And at that point, I normally don't, because it's probably $500 that's owed on it or something yeah. else. And then I bring that to the Board of Abatement. Mm -hmm. Then after that, they can destroy the mobile home. But that's a, fee, you know, that's a cost to them, right. and that's not what Henry's really looking for. He just wants to have them abandoned. And I'm really not sure what that process is for the courts. Yeah. It sounds like you demolish them for free. That's what I'm thinking. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to scrap he can out of them and There's got to be a way cut his losses. Make it easy. So are you looking for a motion on this, Diane? I don't think you are tonight. Not tonight. You know, I, I think mean, we I have a question in to be a lawyer about it as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, Basically, take it under advisement at right. this point. And I think we'll we're bring just, it up again. I think we're just telling you that it is something that's yeah, it's coming to a head because it's been going on for years. We now. really need to clear mm -hmm. some of these old balances. Brad, while Diane's here, could we speak about the contingency of operations sure. next? Thank you. Um, 
It, it would have been nice if I had a contingency of operations plans, however I do not. Um, but I did take um, the um, template off the state's website, which I am going to fill out. Um, I guess it's obviously come to head with this virus thing, what happens if. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably um, will be sitting down with Diane and the staff to come up with what happens if. Um, and then I'll bring it back to you <coughs> at your next meeting. Um, but I wanted, if you had any suggestions or things that I should do, tell me. Yeah. So I'm wondering what we're doing to protect our employees I mean, from an interaction with the public. Well, that's a great that's a great question. And of course, this is my first <coughs> pandemic, so I'm, um, All of ours. I'm new at this. Um, the office is not open for the public. Um, we are serving people through mail or telephone or email. Um, can people do online payments? They can do online payments. We can take credit cards. Um, the clerk's office, um, Corinne is coming in half days to take clerk messages and she will make an appointment if someone has to get in the vault and do research. And she has a procedure and what okay. they would have to do to get in there. Um, and I think that is our worry because if one of us gets sick, the whole the whole building is sick and, and then it's downhill from there. So that's what we're doing now. Um, we're, we're closing for two weeks and I don't know, maybe we'd need to add a week as we go along. It's, the next two weeks, I believe, are going to be very rough. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a process for cross-training and for keeping passwords if anything were ever to happen to anyone to be able to pick up and take over various tasks? You know, that's the biggest problem with having a very small staff. Mm -hmm. um, now, Tom and I are cross-trained, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, can, I could do what Tom does, and, and he can always step Support in you. for me. Um, if Diane were to be out, I could do payroll. Mm -hmm. um, I might be able to even pay a bill. Um, although I'm also the one approving the, the bill, so I mean, usually we don't get into that. Right. You know, I, right. I make it a policy. I don't handle money mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. just because. Yeah. The work I do, um, I have written out. I have a booklet, and everything is, I have the directions of what I do. That's great. Just by chapter. Very thorough. That's great. So we do have that. Um, Passwords, no, we don't know. We don't well. know each other's passwords, mm -hmm. but many programs Diane and I both can get into. Yes. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the NEMRIC system. Mm -hmm. um, and but the clerk's office is a whole different place. Understandable. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so I think. Does the police department have pro processes in place for dealing and interacting with the public? Um, he has worked on something today, and I think I'll let him speak for himself. Okay. Yeah. We can, you can ask him that. He'll be here later. Yeah. Thank you. So I just wanted you to know that it has come to my attention that we really need to have something in place. Yeah, starting tomorrow, restaurants and uh, bars will be closed until April 6th. Mm -hmm. So, except for takeout. So. Mm -hmm. We're not alone by any means. Right. My son has a restaurant in New Hampshire, and he called me tonight. The restaurant's closed because the governor closed them, and he has 2,000 pounds of corned beef for tomorrow. So um, if you're hungry, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's going to do takeout and mm -hmm. try to sell it. So that's all I had in that, Brad. Thank you, Dana. Let's see here. So, we all set the name? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Diane. Yeah. Pam, 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 are you on the phone? Yeah, I'm here. How are you? I'm great. Great. We are ready to hear from you. Um, Pam DeAndrea from the Regional Planning is on the phone with us. And you have in front of you the drawings of the from the design of the stormwater program that 
the consultant Watershed Consultants has come up with. And Pam, I'm just going to let you explain of what the board is looking at. They do, um, John, we've been working on this project I was say, for can someone give me just the one some time. Right yeah, uh, it's a project that we looked at. I, I'm sorry, Pam, I didn't hear you. Yeah, why don't you? That would be good. Is that a way to turn that up? Yes. On the highest bridge. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yep, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yes, thank you. Okay. All right, so John is our new board member, so maybe if you'd give him a background on the project, that would be great. We so had, excuse me, Pam, if I could interrupt. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I was just going to interrupt you for a minute. I just wanted it understood okay. that these five were part of a grant that provided this service um, <coughs> under that grant that people did not have to pay for. Right, thank you. And yeah. Different side people. Of yeah. Um, yeah. The well, grant exactly. For the Isn't it always? <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, can, can you, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. yep. Yes. yes. Great. Thanks, thanks everybody for uh, bearing with me here. We really, really appreciate it. Um, so, as Pam said, my name is Andres Teresa of Watership Consulting, and we've been working on the design um, for the school and for the fire station. So, I think probably the easiest way, if we just want to start on the right hand side of the page, if you're looking at the plan with the school, um, the right hand side is the east where the, where the parking lot is. Is this sheet C1.0, Andre? Is this page that it, This is yeah. actually it's the right hand side of the page uh, right here. If you, if, you, oh. if you look on the, the second uh, sheet, which is C2.0. Okay. C2.0. C2.0 is the existing position. We're there. Go ahead. So you can see what we're proposing is, is the parking lot. If you look at the, the existing parking lot, uh, unpaved parking lot, we're proposing a square um, kind of right down over the bank that would be collecting runoff, which is currently kind of flowing over the bank. And Andre, I'm sorry. Is we, this, are we talking the school or are we talking chimney sweep? Okay, then we're on the wrong. We want to go back to 1.0. 1.0 yeah, is the school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Y
I think that's a good idea. Go ahead. I think we're ready for the chimney sweep one. So in the, yeah, so in the chimney sweep, um, you do have the, the C2.0, I believe, right? Yes. So if you're looking at the chimney sweep site, um, there, there's a similar situation here where essentially there's uncontrolled you know, stormwater that's, that's discharging right through the new and it goes kind of, it, it collects and it also collects the existing chimney sweep parking lot, and it also collects the state of Vermont Department of Water Vehicle site, that's the way. Um, all that water kind of collects within this drainage system, and it, and it drains under the 
basically designed to manage all the stormwater, not just from the city suite, but also from even the state parcel across the street, which is one of these future three-acre regulated sites, and also um, Route 302 as well. So it's a, uh, you know, it's a voluntary project that we're really, we're, um, we're kind of getting ahead of the game now and trying to apply some of this treatment to When do you anticipate this to be completed, this plan? Well, good. Okay. Any, okay. Any questions for us? Any, so is any uh, comments or questions, I mean, specific comments or questions on these? Um, you know, forward them to Dan or Jeff or myself. Um, and we'll get them directed to Andre's team. Um, and I will email, um, I will have to make sure that we get uh, the select board, Dana, between you and I, get them the full set for the Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Jeff Prescott, such Vermont runner special event permit. Jeff was going to be here, but along with. Um, these two with the pandemic, they, he did not come either. Um, he has applied for special event permits for three events. They are three road races. Uh, the first is to be held April 25th. It's the Paul Mailman 10 Mile. It starts at Montpelier High School and goes out Junction Road, Three Mile Bridge Road, Jones Brook Road, and returns. And they've done this a number of years. That's that they're asking for April 25th. The next one, uh, and these the applicant is actually Central Vermont Runners. The next one is to be held June 6th, and it's called the Annual Capital City Stampede. Stampede, and. It starts on Langdon Street in Montpelier. That also uses a portion of Junction Road. Uh, and the last that they've applied for is 
um, for August 13th, it's the Runaround Berlin Pond. And what we've done in the past, we've allowed them to use this building to tally their uh, results. That's August 13th. Now, I do have a phone number. If you had any questions that I couldn't answer, I could call them. Um, but it is something we have done, um, you've approved several years. In and I have run it by the chief, and there have not been any issues with this. Were they going to take and uh, put signs up on the roads before the races? And they did do that last year, I believe. Okay. So they would do that again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they provide insurance as well. Okay. Motion? I'll make a motion to allow the three places in the corner of Berlin. Second. Any further discussion? None. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, review of the advertisement from Highway Superintendent. Yes, let me, let me just make sure I get this out so I can get to the sign it for me. Yes, I wanted you to see the advertisement for the highway superintendent position and get your suggestions. I've given you um, a copy of the advertisement for the position. I was asking for the resumes to be returned by April 17th, and I would hope that we would have a suitable candidate picked by the middle of May with a start date of about June 15th so they could work a couple weeks with Tim before he leaves. Mm -hmm. No, there's no minimum requirement on the number of years of experience. We could put that in. That's, um, what would you think it should be? I don't know. I, I, I guess. I guess what I one guess, thing is, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a good point, and I think that yeah. they have to be able to run. What, what, what are you thinking of for experience? Um, well, management of a crew, um, management of a snow, snow plow operator. So pre, in, in previous uh, select board jobs, when you have a person come on, you know, they end up getting stuck a lot. Um, they have all kinds of issues. They break things, not on purpose, but it's just a skill set that takes a while to, um, you know, come up to speed with. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, uh, the management supervisory part is as important as anything because you don't want to lose your good guys, right? If you have cause someone come in that's never managed before, um, you know, so sometimes they don't have those soft skills yet to be able to uh, mm -hmm. manage people and you end up losing your good employees too. Um, so uh, you can vet that out through the interview process most of the time, but um, I don't know. It's just something to consider. I think it's a good point. I mean, obviously, when you interview someone, you'd be looking for those types of things because mm -hmm. this is a, a management position. I would also like it to be kind of morph into more better planning for the future. Um, and I'm not criticizing anything that's been done now, but um, planning for the future, I think, is very important. Um, so... I'm trying to just get my head around. Um, obviously, we need someone who knows how to run the equipment and that can teach other people. That's something I would like to see more of, actual teaching of these staff pieces of equipment. I hate to put a time of experience because I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, the, the only thing that uh, strikes me with that is if you are looking for a lot of experience, you're going to be getting a person that's only going to be with you for 10 years before retirement. And I would rather think some about maybe someone with a little bit less experience but with a longer lifetime here. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to do this over and over. And I think, like you said, in the interview process, you can vet it out. 
Because, I mean, for the most part, the only ones that are going to apply are probably people who are already working a road crew. I bet we, I would be shocked if we had eight or ten people apply. I bet it's less than that, maybe a hundred. Well, I mean, how many applied when Tim? Three? I, yeah. I, really? So, you narrow down that to you know, I think you may have you may have seven or eight applications, but the short list is going to be pretty short um, when you're done. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's just having had a job working on a highway department doesn't necessarily, as you noted, um, make a very good supervisor. One good thing about this job is that it's a working supervisor; they're not an office person. Right. It would also, I think, would be if someone had less experience, you could kind of mold him or her the way that you wanted them to go. Who could? Um, the town could. General. General. <laughs> I'm picturing you in the passenger seat of the dump truck. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't put me in the driver's seat. So, I mean, from first glance, it looks fine to me, but, um, you know, it's something that I, I made do if I was in your position was to ask the about links of cities and towns to have a generalized one just to compare against. Mm -hmm. Okay, good or idea. The, or the Vermont local roads has a uh, listserv where the guy, the road guys, talk back and forth all the time about mm -hmm. you know bids and equipment and things like that. That might be another good place, uh, not only to ask if someone has a job description that you compare compare yours against, but also a place to post the job when it comes time. Right. Okay. Good idea. So I just wanted you to see where we were with that. So I'm going to try and get that out within the next week. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, appointment of Eric Chase to the Public Works Board. We have an opening on the Public Works Board um, for a member. And we have, Eric Chase has expressed interest in being appointed. He's been a resident of town for nine years. He works for the City of Montpelier Public Works Department. And he's also helped out with the water, sewer, street, and equipment divisions. Um, now, you know Eric. Um, and so he, I, I think he'll be good. For I didn't, public usually work. I ask someone to come in, but. This is kind of an unusual meeting, so I didn't ask him. Yeah. Um, and I spoke to him today, and he was hoping to have something. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, <coughs> he's he's worked for the city of Montpelier for quite a while. He's, you know, he's got knowledge of the, he's got some sort of uh, public water certification. So I mean, he I think he would be licensed. Yeah. Yeah, to operate yeah. a water yeah. system. So yeah. I mean, I think he would be a great asset. What authority does the Public Works Board have in Berlin? They really are, um, they have authority according to their, um, the ordinance, which um, the board adopted earlier this year. But basically, the board, the select board has authority over them. Um, they always come to the select board when they have um, a question that they feel needs higher authority. But as far as the day-to-day -day operations and decisions Tom works for them um, that are made, they usually take care of that. Um, and the Public Works Board is fairly new. I mean, it's only been two years, maybe, that we've had the Public Works Board. board. And which encompasses the Water Division and the Sewer Division. Um, and as you know, there's a lot going on in both divisions right now with mm -hmm. big projects. As far as authority, as far as borrowing the money, no, they don't have they don't have the authority that would come to you. Policy wise, they, they create policy and we approve or Yes. Okay. Yeah. I make a motion to appoint Eric Chase to the Public Works Board. Second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Ah, yes. Appointment of Mac Levine to the representative of Central Vermont Solid 
Yeah, Matt uh, Levine has been the town's representative on the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District at least for six years since I've been here. Um, and he spoke with me at town meeting again and would like to be reappointed again. Um, I think he's done a very good job for the town. I sent you the background and I was very impressed with his attendance. And he does come in and talk to the board once in a while to give you an update of what's happening. This is going to be a busy year with the um, food waste that will be coming up in the next few months. Um, so he is asking for your consideration to be reappointed for the year. Is there a motion? Second. I make the motion, motion to appoint Matt Levin as representative to the CBSMD. Second motion. Any further discussion? And I need you to authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the board this appointment form that I will fill out. And I make the motion that the board chair sign on behalf of the motion to appoint Matt Levin as representative to the CBSMD. Your second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. minutes of the Conservation Commission? I'm just giving you, I'm thinking that I'm going to, I, I realize that some committees email you their minutes, and I'm not trying to duplicate efforts, but in an effort to make sure that you see them, I'm going to give you copies of them um, okay. as we go along. If you have any questions, I would be glad to seek an answer. Are they posted on our website as well? Yes. But not until they're approved? Um, when they drafted. No, I believe they're posted when they're drafted. Okay. Um, and we've had, you know, some committees have been slow in getting them ready to be posted, and, and there is a five-day turnaround, okay. um, and that doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. but, but they have been better. Excellent. So they've been working on it. Select board minutes from February 19th and February 27th. I make the motion to approve both the select board minutes of February 19th, 2020 and February 27th, 2020 as presented. Second the motion. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Abstaining. Okay, um, motion carries, and let's see here. Was there any other thing on the additions, Dana? Um, we have the approval of the licenses that needs to be done, working on the right of way, and the letter received from a resident. Well, let's start with the letter received from the resident. Alrighty. Um, and I have copies for everybody. This came in today. Um, this is a follow-up from Tim Bingham of Shed Road. He lives on the corner of Shed Road, and he is um, concerned about the traffic on Shed Road. Um, if you recall that we had given permission to, Winterset is working for the state of Vermont as far as replacing bridge decks over Crosstown Road and Exit 7. Uh, they are going to have their trailer over here, and they 
have had trucks come in and out. Now, I think when the construction starts, those trucks won't be coming in and out because they'll be down at the job site. Um, when you but, say trucks, are you talking pickups or heavy trucks? Uh, they have uh, pickups and heavy trucks. And other, they have a, I don't know what you'd call it, like a ladder, a machine with a ladder that goes up. So they're not using this as a staging area? No, no. They're just using it as office space? Right. Okay. You know, I mean, they have had a lot of traffic in and out uh, while they're getting set up. Yeah. Um, Kim um, is always concerned when we have the gravel and sand delivered in the fall because there was truckload after truckload after truckload coming in and out of the driveway. Um, and then he's, you know, and he's asking questions, um, is there a rental agreement, which, no, we don't have one. Do we get rent? No. Um, some of these other um, companies that he mentions, the line painting company, Tim allowed him to be in the yard because they painted all our lines for free. So it was kind of a, mm -hmm. um, they did us a, a treat, a favor. So we've tried to be open about allowing people to use the yard. Um, we don't collect any rent. There is no lease and no re rental agreement. They do have the liability insurance. We and they have, have, we always have, they have the liability insurance. And his house is very close to the road. Has anyone ever expressed concern other than Mr. Other than, other Mr. than Bingham? Mr. Bingham? No. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think really the only, I mean, if you'd like me to draft the letter, I think I can draft it and, and, and tell them. Um, maybe we could be mindful about it in the future, but again, I guess the way I look at it, it's a public road. Mm -hmm. We've been here a long time, and we have lots of trucks. Do normal business operations, yeah. pretty much. And then I guess if he would like to come in, that would be fine too. He could come in and chat with you. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So I will let him know that. He's a nice gentleman. Um, How long has he lived there? I think he's been there probably four or five years. Okay. Yeah, definitely welcome him to come in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. He had said he could not come tonight. Right. Um, the letter and next on the um, working in the right of way sure this is an uh, this is La Jeunesse construction that is asking for a working in the right of way permit they are installing the water service from our water line to the building I guess it's still um, first and fitness building up on Granger Road yeah um, they're having water installed, and they need to get into the road to connect to the main. How many um, units do they have? For um, first and fitness, how many? Uh, I I don't know that off the top of my head, Brad. I could I could find out. I'm just wondering. You know, but that's all part of the of the pre-bought. It's all part of the pre-bought, and, and yeah. they've they've been in the wings to, to yeah. do it. They're just getting around to it now. Um, they anticipate that um, the t well, this is the project in the in the right of way is about five thousand dollars. Quite often we ask for a bond, and um, I think that if they were to give us, usually they would give us a check rather than go through a bond process. But for five hundred dollars that we could hold, yep. it would probably be adequate if you were granted. Ten percent. About ten. Yeah. Motion. Move to approve the uh, permit right away from in the right of way um, with the five hundred dollar deposit or right. bond. Right. Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And this is another one the board chairman signs. Uh, in the liquor licenses. 
Um, yeah, did you want to approve the vouchers? Um, we can do that now, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I make the motion to approve the general funds accounts payable warrant number 20G17 with checks 231 to 20104 in the amount of $147,272.65. General Fund Auto Payment NSB 20-21 in the amount of $5,661.76. Payroll Warrant 20-18 for February 16, 2020 to February 29, 2020 paid on March 4, 2020 in the amount of $50,194.13. Payroll Warranty 20-19 for March 1, 2020 to March 14, 2020 paid on March 18, 2020 in the amount of $43,641.40, also February 2020 general journal and tax admin entry, and reconciled February bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission, and water division. Second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Now, a motion to enter into the Liquor Commission. Move to re uh, recess the select board meeting and convene the Liquor Board meeting. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 It motion. is. Oh, go ahead. Motion carries. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. Um, it is uh, renewal of liquor licenses time. <laughs> and so we have. These are just given to me this afternoon, so bear with me while I look and see who they are. Um, Dollar General at 1755 U.S. Route 302. That's volume beer. Um, what, what is it? Jason Rice, Rice there? That's just wine beer. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a class two license. Second, second class license. Um... Walmart stores. Um, that's also second class license. And Pizza Hut. All have had these. They're all renewals. <coughs> I have no reason to tell you not to confirm them. When are the other restaurants supposed to renew? It's due April 1st. So um, we've had several that have done it. I don't know um, who hasn't yet. But it's April, April 1st for class two, second class. Could you go through that and find out? Because usually we always have some straggler. <laughs> well, so and here... It's already past. I mean, you know, we're in a situation now and again without... I should have asked Rosemary before she went on her trip, but I didn't think of it, um, of what we have left. Because April 1st, we won't be meeting before April 1st. Yeah. So we may not be able to why get away from the Why wouldn't we have a policy that just allows people, especially maybe like, I get maybe a new business coming into town, but upon a renewal without any issues, why wouldn't we have it so they could just apply, pay the fee, and Rosemary or somebody could Well, we do that. have that policy, as a matter of fact. Um, I thought we did for a special event, too, on right? Special, on things like that. We've not really included the annual renew license renewal in that. Um, but certainly Rosemary knows the customers that are, right. you know. So our policy as it is now, the select board or the town clerk can do it? Right now, uh, the town clerk can approve catering applications. Gotcha. Yeah. Being new, I have a procedural question. I'm a little confused on why we exited out of the select board meeting. Because the Liquor Commission is not the select board. And that's in our charter? Or is that just a separate commission that we created? Mm -hmm. What's well, always been done? That's, that's a great question. That's a great answer. We've always done it that way. Um, well, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in Northfield, you know, separate town, separate everything, I get it. But um, the select board just went through the same process you, got, you guys are going through now, or we're going through. And just approved them. Um, and we didn't have a separate. As part of the select board meeting, or something. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Just curious, I didn't know if there was something in the charter that... But we've always I don't believe that so. Way. I don't okay. believe there's anything in the charter. I think yeah. what it was is the previous psych like, boards have always tried to keep the two separated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same board, but there's a different decision. I think the statute makes them separate unless your charter doesn't, which we don't feel probably. It's like the Wild West over there. I was going to say perhaps Northwood has been doing question. it right. <laughs> However, I will find out. I was just curious. I've because it is an interesting question. I hate, Definitely. I hate it when I have to say, gee, we're always on the job. Tradition. Yeah. Uh, so right now, Rosemary can approve the catering permits, right. but she cannot approve these. Is there any reason why we wouldn't want her to be able to approve them? Or? I guess I, if you're asking me, I'd say, no, I can't think of one. I think the only thing I've ever heard is, you know, when when a business has several infractions against it, the select board can, or the liquor commission can say, you know, we've had three infractions, is this really the type of place we want selling alcohol? I not. believe what happens, I mean, if we have, for the catering licenses, if Rosemary gets one she does not know and is not familiar with, she's going to kick it up to you. Mm -hmm. um, if it gets by the... Because this is the next step goes over to the state, and if they have an issue, there's going to be a problem. Right. Usually, she would know about the problem before we sent it over, because they would notify her um, of any problems. So right now, I guess uh, what we can do, Dana, is um, put it on the uh, on another agenda, and we can take and uh, as a thing to do. And we can take and um, discuss it because we really should have Rosemary's input on it too. Mm -hmm. she's the and I will, I will check a little bit into exactly what the law mm -hmm. is and why we do separate it out to answer that. Well, the question. thing that would worry me is if if the state is requiring some sort of a liquor commission, then I don't see if we could really pass it on to Rosemary. Right. I do know that uh, in. In Barry City, for example, the city clerk does it all. No, she, doesn't. she brings it to the council. Eh? Oh, does she bring it to the council? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we better check the laws here and find out. I guess I better. Then we can go from there. Right. But is it, At any rate, can we talk into these? Yep. Yeah. I was going to say, as, <laughs> as the liquor commission, can we take and uh, approve these or have a motion to approve or disapprove? Move to approve the liquor licenses that Dana. I second the motion. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. So these get signed under the approved section. Okay. By all of us. Yeah. Okay. And move to recess. No, you move to adjourn. Oh, adjourn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> adjourn for the one. Move to adjourn the liquor uh, board meeting. I second motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, town administrator's report, Dana. I had given you a list of, and some of these may be crossover in both categories, but a list of outstanding items that I'm working with or not working with, as the case may be. And also, um, I wanted to, the board to think about goals for this, for this year. Um, I've got one for increased revenue sources, tree tapping, or the local, maybe looking into local option tax again. <laughs> or maybe. Um, and any others, I thought, I would, I would think that we'd want to talk about like uh, communities or whatever with the development. Mm -hmm. And everything you were talking about. All right. We're going to figure out how to pay for some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, well, that's what I'm looking for. You like, um, which direction you'd like to go? One of the things. <laughs> the private call to replacement. Oh. <laughs> One of the things that I 
had written down too was I want to make sure we look at that tax stabilization policy. Did I put that on? I no, I didn't. I'm not yeah, I've got a re on. tax stabilization oh, rewrite. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Three. Yeah. Yep. Right there. And then I think you'd want to avoid, uh, involve the economic right. development council. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be wise. Yeah. Yeah, I just. Yeah, we're just going to start checking some stuff off, right? Mm -hmm. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, tentatively, we have a meeting for the 6th with the Public Works Board. I'm waiting on a few confirmations on that. Um, I think I'm ready to bring back to you the road classification change policy with a little different added wording. Um, sure, we're going to go. And we are still waiting for the hazard mitigation plan to be removed, reviewed by Vermont Emergency Management, and I imagine we'll be waiting since they're pretty busy right now. Um, so, did you find out about the um, about um, who gets to do the emergency management here in Berlin? Well, we had talked about that, and the best. Uh, I don't know if I understand it yet, and so I'm, I need to okay. do a little more, but, you know, they're saying that it's the entire board, when we have no emergency management director, that it's the entire board, and the board makes a decision, which I'm not questioning, but it seems to be a little um, cumbersome. cumbersome mm -hmm. yeah. What decision are you speaking of? We don't have an emergency management director. Okay. And so the job falls back on the select board. And that's because we don't have a town fire department? Mm, no. no. It's, it's, it's um, okay. the emergency management director many times is the fire, fire chief. In, in our case, it's not. Uh, we have an emergency management committee, and we have um, maybe four or five people on that. But nobody wants to be chairman. Are you volunteering? I, I was just trying to learn. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Brad, I'll, uh, yep. when I have more, I'll get back to you on that. Was that it for the... Um, let's see, what else did I want to... Oh, and I gave you a, a list of what the openings on, on committees were, although you just filled the Public Works Board. Um, I also want to ask you, I was supposed to meet with the Recreation Committee this week, having meetings during this pandemic, um, I would assume if we only have four or five people, that would be okay to do that. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I mean, I, I just need, you know... I think so. I mean, if we could spread out a little bit. <laughs> well, I could put tables over there. You no, I'm, the just, I'm yeah. just thinking, like, as far as the, you know, what they're what they're suggesting. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that's... I mean, they said ten people, no more than ten people a day, or you yeah. recommended the guidance was ten people. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I, I've done that. Um. I believe this Saturday there is going to be an apple tree pruning workshop down at. The Friendship Park on Route 12. Um, Dave Wilcox is is uh, <coughs> running it along with the Conservation Commission, and as far as I know, it's going to happen. And that's all I have, Brad. Yep. Back hey. on on that, should we try to talk with the uh, Berlin Corner Cemetery again? I don't know. We want to try to reach out to them, or if you have, and they haven't responded. Um, the rabbit came to us. Well, of course, as you know, they did come to us and express that they were going to run into financial problems in future years, and the town just um, donated ten thousand dollars to them in the FY twenty one year. Yeah. You tell them so are we. Um, <laughs> well, mm -hmm. so, so I I guess at some point it is going to come to a head that. It's going to have to be a decision made um, right, about would the be, cemetery. It would maybe be worth us looking at before they were out of funds and we donated right. many, many years.
acres of extra. I think they have assets somewhere in the three hundred thousand dollar range of home. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, are the board openings uh, listed on the website? All that. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's how I am able. I finally learned that if I do that, then I then I satisfy the requirement to have them posted in ten days. Do we know the percentage of the Berlin population that can see the um, select board meeting on TV? Um, it's on, is it on TV? I can't see it, I don't think we're right. on one of the... Um, I don't. I don't it's on, on the, on it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. I, you know. Through Orca Media. Oh, yeah. On, on yeah. Comcast, I think it's, channel, at least on our TV, it's channel... 15. Okay, so this section of town that has Comcast, I guess, can see it on television. Yeah, but I mean, is it posted us. to YouTube? It's or? on the it's on the website. Yeah, is it, so it's Orca supposed Media's, to be YouTube and yeah. everything else. On yeah. Orca Media's. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. it's readily available as long as you have many it. people who watch it. Well, the, the yeah. reason I was asking was just around the open seats. You know, actually saying them out loud may. More people to understand what we have if they're not going to go to the website. You know, the Conservation Com Commission and the Development Review Board and the Public Works Board. Well, we just filled that one. The Recreation Board and the Cemetery Commission are the open seats that we have, and at least if someone's listening, they can sure. hear it without Definitely having to Definitely express go an interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else, Dana? All set. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay, round table. Justin? Nothing. Nothing. The only thing I have is when we wanted to discuss the ladies on positions to any of the boards from the board. I was itself. going to do that at the next meeting. Oh, I see. Um, because I'm also going to have you at that meeting the people who are on those boards that terms are expiring. Makes I, sense. I'm going to be so I thought I'd do it all. all that back. makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's I have the only nothing. thing. So you all set? So. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any executive session? Yes, please. I make the motion to enter executive session to discuss a personnel matter pursuant to 1BSA Section 313A2.